Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we are checking out the GTX 1070. In 2022, it was once one of the best gaming cards out there and we absolutely loved it. And it's been a while since we've gotten to benchmark one of these. The 1070 is coming down in price as the GPU shortage is ending and it's well under $200. And we wanna to see today, is it a card you should pick up for your next gaming PC? But well, we're about to find out. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, the online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically Windows 10 licenses. With Windows 10 it is so easy just to go onto the website using the link in the description down below and then go to the Windows 10, click buy it now, add code TB20, then go to the checkout, put in your payment info and then boom you will get within a few seconds or a few minutes an activation code that you will go into Windows 10, put in the activation code and it is fully legit, it will work out of the box and you will have a fully activated Windows 10 license. We use GVG Mall for all the PCs we built here at the Toasty Bros, and so should you. So definitely check the link in the description down below and use code TB20 to save money on checkouts. So Matt's gonna read off some tech specs for you guys, but real quick, just to give you a modern day comparison, because well, we are now on 30 series and pretty soon 40 series is probably gonna come out. So this is technically two, three generations behind, but this card actually performs basically like a GTX 1660 Super or in even more modern day, it's pretty close to something like an RTX 3050 or RTX 3050 Ti found in laptops. Now in terms of the main tech specs for the GTX 1070, the things that you need to know about is it has eight gigs of GDDR5 memory, which is very, very important in a bunch of newer AAA titles. Having eight gigs of VRAM is pretty essential if you wanna get good performance, even at 1080p and those CUDA cores, 1,920 CUDA cores, which compares pretty well to a 1660 Super. That's why we have that direct comparison. And if you wanna learn more about the 1070, obviously the link's down below. But what we're gonna be doing is throwing the 1070 into this test bench featuring the Ryzen 5 5600G. We've used this for a bunch of benchmarks. Check out the uh, playlist somewhere. It'll pop up somewhere with all the other benchmarks that we've done. And uh, yeah, 16 gigs of RAM, 5600G. And we're gonna play a bunch of today's popular titles to see whether or not the 1070 is worth it. Let's just dive into those benchmarks. All right, guys, now that we have the GTX 1070 on the test bench, let's dive into some game testing, shall we? Now, the games we decided to test with this graphics card are as follows. Call of Duty Warzone, Battlefield 5, Apex Legends, Cyberpunk, and Fortnite. Now, first up, in Warzone, 1080p, medium-low settings, we got an average of 100 plus FPS. Now, the reason I love the 1070 so much is the price point and the fact that it comes with 8 gigs of VRAM, which is starting to become vital in modern AAA titles, like a game like Call of Duty Warzone and a game like Cyberpunk. Punk, which you'll see later on in this benchmark run, but getting 100 plus FPS, sometimes into the 120s, getting a high refresh rate experience in Warzone with a graphics card that at the time of recording this video is selling for $150 to $200 on eBay, I think is an absolute steal compared to the new cards on the market right now. Yes, of course, you could spend a little bit more for something like an RX 6600, but we're talking at least $50 to $100 more on average to get that card, which would be a better option. But if we're talking about $150 for 1070, which I have seen some sell for $100, $50, you are competing with something like a RX 6500 XT, which we all know how that card is. Next up in Battlefield 5, which is a pretty demanding game as well, 1080p, we got 80 FPS with dips into the 60s. Now, when we're testing a card like a 1070 on this test bench, which was originally built for really cheap cards, um, we are going to experience a little bit of CP bottlenecking potentially with that 5600G, but 80 plus FPS, medium settings, 1080p, and a game that is very GPU dependent. Going to high, you should get a lock 60 FPS if that's what you're looking for, but me personally, I like to get above the 60 FPS threshold if I'm going to be using like a high refresh rate monitor or something, just to avoid those dips below 60 and keep a nice smooth gaming experience. Battlefield 5 gets a pass. Now let's dive into Apex Legends, a more demanding esports title at 1080p once again, high medium settings. We got 100 plus FPS. Now the 1070 again is a great card. We did do a build guide with it with the i3 10100F, which is actually a really good pairing for it for a $500 PC. If you haven't seen that video, hit the eye on the top right corner, but that 8 gigs of VRAM, it works really well. And also if you're wanting to get into live streaming, yes, it's an amazing card it has the NVENC encoder it is a 10,000 series card though so it doesn't have the new NVENC encoder like the RTX series does that does perform decently better in terms of visual quality but you do have that option to dive into live streaming in a card that's sub $200 and I think will last two three maybe four more years with the games that come on the market unless there's a dramatic change in terms of VRAM usage because I think 8 gigs is still going to be a good standard for 
1080p gaming for the next three to four years. Now let's talk about Cyberpunk, a game that's gonna absolutely max out this GPU. 1080p high settings, we actually average 66 FPS with a minimum of 43 and a max of 90. Those minimums are a little bit low, so yeah, we are pushing this thing to its limits. Medium settings is probably more ideal for Cyberpunk because it is a newer title compared to this graphics card, which has been out for a while now, uh, but still getting a 60 FPS average at 1080p, really awesome. And the last game we decided to test was Fortnite, of course. And again, I do like to give this disclaimer out here. Fortnite is a much more CPU dependent game than it is a GPU dependent game, but a lot of people like to see Fortnite. So here we go. And on DX11, Epic View Distance, everything else on low, we got 100 plus FPS. Now when the 1070 released, the games that were on the market, the older AAA titles, you could easily play 1080p, 1440p, no problems whatsoever. Nowadays, I probably would just lean 1080p high refresh rate if you are to pick up something like a GTX 1070, but I really do think it's still an amazing buy. And especially if you get at $150, just totally ignore the 6500 XT. It is not worth even considering that card at the same price point because the 1070 is gonna be a much better buy. And if you wanna hunt for one on eBay, check the link down below. It will be an affiliate link and it will help us out. And let me know what you think of the 1070 and let me know if there's any other cards you wanna see added to this test bench so we can test some popular games for you guys and show you which budget GPUs you should buy. So now we finished the benchmarking section of today's video. How about we bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, we just wrapped up some benchmarks. And as you can see, it performs like a 1070. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Have a good day. That's it. 1070. You just kidding. It. But the best part about this is that we have seen them going for as low as $150. Before the shortages, sometimes we could snag one of these for like $130. you are getting 8 gigs of VRAM. You're typically getting 5 display outs, which is like the max. A lot of new cards don't even come with more than 4 or 3 sometimes. And on top of that, you're getting a card that can play AAA titles. And you can even max out settings still in quite a few games. Get 1440p. And even in Esports titles 4K gaming, which is pretty insane for a card that's that cheap. And even though this is an older card, it's still going to get driver support for a bit longer, and the prices on the used market are just really good. At that $150 mark, you're comparing to something like a 6500 XT. I would buy that any day over that card oh, yeah. because of all the issues that come with the Gen 4 support. But 1070, check the link down below if you want to shop around on eBay. It will be an affiliate link and will help us out. Keep in mind, it is a general search on eBay, so you're going to have to do some hunting yourself, but we do highly recommend you plop this into a card and uh, maybe check out our $500 build guide where we did use this card as well. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toastybros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. So Matt and I were talking about a lot of mumbo jumbo. We were spitting out all kinds of crazy numbers about this graphics card. And if that just really doesn't pertain to you, you just want to play some Fortnite, you want to play some Warzone, some Vanguard, some Battlefield, we definitely got you covered at PCBros.Tech. PCBros.Tech cuts through the gobbledygook so you don't have to. And if you use code ToastyBros2 on checkout, you can save 2% on your next purchase. PCBros.Tech, see you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.